Welcome to the final video for this section. Enjoy this theoretical stuff while you can, because we're getting into applications and global extrema in the next section, which is not 2.4, but 2.5, all right? We are skipping 2.4. Anyway, so uh, remember that a point of inflection, which I a lot of times abbreviate as POI, is a point where the concavity changes. So sometimes points of inflection, you know, if we have something like this, right, it's this point in the middle where it goes from concave down over here to concave up over here. So we're going to be finding points of inflection by finding when the second derivative equals zero and seeing whether the concavity changes over there, okay? So first part of this and kind of the last part of this is just like our previous example. I don't know why I say example one. This is example three. All right. And I do have an erasing capability, but I really want to comment on this error. All right. So we're going to find the relative extrema. We'll classify them with the first or the second derivative test. We'll find the points of inflection by setting the second derivative equal to zero. And then we'll plot all the information. Okay. So to start this out, we are going to have to find the first derivative because we want our critical points. All right. So to find the critical points, we find the first derivative and set it equal to zero. The power rule says we're going to get 3x squared minus 12x plus 9. And remember, critical point is when this equals zero. We're going to set zero equal to 3x squared minus 12x plus 9. Now, there's an easy and hard way to solve this quadratic equation. Uh, there's a couple of hard ways. Quadratic formula, you're going to have to use that sometime, so uh, maybe brush it off. We could factor it, but remember if you're factoring this, that we want to take out the greatest common factor first. If we factor out an, a 3, it actually gets a lot easier because if we factor out a 3, our leading coefficient becomes 1. Now we can factor this as a nice, well-behaved trinomial. The 3 stays out in front, and the trinomial on the inside factors to something that I think we factored in an earlier video. This looks very familiar, but now we have a 3. All right? And this is going to equal 0 when x is equal to 3 and positive 1. So critical points, right? are going to be when x is equal to 3 and when x is equal to 1. But remember, critical points, critical points are points. We need the y-coordinates. So we plug into the original function to get those y-coordinates. When we plug in 1 into the original function, we're going to get 1 minus 6 is negative 5, plus 9 is 4, 4 plus 3 is 7, maybe. And uh, we plug in 3 to the original function. We are going to have me use my calculator so that I don't mess this up. We're going to have 3 cubed minus 6 times 3 squared plus 9 times 3 plus 3 is equal to positive 3. So these are our critical points. This is important. We may make a little star here. So, when you find the critical points, we need to classify these critical points with either the first derivative test or the second derivative test. So for practice, I'm going to use both real quick. All right, so before I use the second derivative test, we do need to find the second derivative. Remember, the first derivative was this guy up here. So we take the derivative of that, again, we get 6x minus 12. Now we'll use the first derivative test or the second derivative test on these two critical points, when x is 3 and positive 1. So we could use the first derivative test, try it over here. And remember that's where we look at positive 1, positive 3. And we look at what is the sine of the derivative, sine of f prime in these intervals. And that'll have to do with whether it's increasing or decreasing. 
We'll pick a point to the left of one. Again, I'll use zero. Pick a point in the middle. Again, I'll use two. Pick a point on the right. Again, I'll use four. We plug these into the first derivative. Zero, two, and four. So we plug them in right here. If x is equal to zero, plug in zero, we should get positive nine here. Plug in two here. We're gonna get 12 minus 24 is negative 12, plus nine is negative three. And we plug in four, we should get uh, 48 minus 48, which is zero, plus nine. We should get a positive 9 here. So over here, to the left of 1, we have a positive derivative. The function is increasing. In the middle, when x is 2, we have a negative derivative. The function is decreasing. And to the right, at 4, we have a positive derivative again. The function is increasing once more. So by the first derivative test, the point 1, comma, 7, a local maximum. And again, even if you forget the first derivative test, if you look at the shape here, you can get local maximum, right? Increasing to decreasing. We're going up, then we're going down. We must have had a hill, a peak, local max. Similarly, the point 3, comma 3, it's going down and then it's going up. That's a local min. Let's say hypothetically that you don't like the first derivative test. Or if you have extra time and you want to check your answer, you could also use a second derivative test. October, my youngest cat is really flipping out right now. She is probably going to start climbing the ceiling. All right. So if we use the second derivative test, we plug in the actual points into the second derivative. One. And we'll look at the second derivative at 3. And remember from the previous page, we know the second derivative, this guy right here. So if we plug in 1 here, we get negative 6 for our first derivative. It's concave down right here. So if it's concave down, this should be a local max. And indeed, at positive 1, it is a local max. Great. If we plug in positive 3 into our derivative, right here, we'll get positive 6 as our second derivative. So again, over here, it should be concave up, which will be a local min, which again is also what we had. We have found and we have classified our critical points. That's our first step. It was a very long first step. All right. But we also need points of inflection, right? Using relative extrema and points of inflection, sketch the graph. So we need to find a point of inflection. That's what we're going to do next. We're going to say, okay, remember point, yep. point of inflection is when concavity changes. So, whoa, forgot the word changes there. We're going to find when is the second derivative equal to zero. So remember our second derivative function down there on the bottom. Set that equal to zero. 6x minus 12 equals zero. Well, this is just a nice linear equation. Add 12 to both sides. 6x equals, po sex x. Six x equals positive 12. Divide both sides by 6. We'll get x is equal to 2. This is a possible point of inflection. Luckily for us, we use the second derivative test. We know to the left, we had a negative concavity. To the right of positive 2, we had positive concavity. So we already know the concavity changes here. All right. So the point of inflection is going to be 2, comma, the y value. And remember, to find the y value, you plug it into the original function. Original function gives y value. 
Derivative gives slope. Second derivative gives concavity. All right, if you plug that into your original function, you should get uh, 8 minus 24 is negative 16, plus 18 is 2, plus 3 is 5. I'm hoping this is between our critical points. Is the y value of 5 between our critical points? Oh, it is. Nice. Between 7 and 3 for those y values. Great. So we have our point of inflection right here. We have our critical points classified over there. All that's left is incorporating this into a pretty little sketch. Let's do that. So all of our y values here are like positive. So uh, when we sketch this, we can have most things be positive. All right, so let's incorporate this information. Point of inflection at 2 comma 5. That'll be right there. Local maximum at 1 comma 7. So again, very locally, right, what's happening is we have a local max. Kind of looks like that. Local minimum at 3 comma 3. Again, it's a local minimum, so very locally, it looks kind of like that. And that point in the middle is just where it goes from concave down to concave up. All right, so now we just kind of connect the dots and connect these shapes. We get something that looks like that. All right, and it doesn't need to be a perfect graph. All that matters is that you do what the problem asked. And the problem asked set here to include relative extrema and points of inflection. And that's what we've done here for this cubic function, right? We have our local max right here. We have our local minimum right here. This point in the middle is where it goes from concave up to concave down, technically vice versa, right? To the left of this point, this is concave down. It kind of looks like a downwards parabola. To the right of this point, it's concave up. Kind of looks like an upwards parabola. All right, and that's how you do these sketches. Again, feel free to uh, ask some more questions if you've got them, and good luck on your quiz this week. We've got one more section for you.